Material creation is handled by a single UI tool, which is accessible inside the render shelf, tab menus in the scene view, and the object level view, or in a user-defined shortcut that you can create by simply doing what I just did. <laughs> so let's open up the UI tool. So you can either select a bunch of uh, nodes, which you know you can do after opening it if you want to, uh, or you can have no nodes selected and that will just create the material without assigning anything. You have two options for the naming mode. You can either use the name from selected node, which will create a material per each of these selected nodes, or you can create a single material that will be assigned to all of your selection by unchecking that or using the shortcut tab. Render engine. These are all the engines that I currently support. You can cycle through them with the control one. All of these can be cycled with control plus a number. Then in network, you can use a matnet or a shop net, or for example, if you want to add a matnet, then you reopen it and you can see that your new matnet is there and you can use that as well. So it's pretty open to, it's pretty flexible in the way that you can work. Material types that we got supported are standard and volume for all the render engines. We have presets, which uh, I've included all the Redshift presets, but these are the presets that are available in this menu here. This group option allows you to add the materials to new or existing network boxes, so you can easily group your materials together. So let's go ahead and create a material for each of our instances here, like so. So I'm going to add this to a group and we're going to call this instances. And then you can either now click on this button or you can use the shortcut enter to create the material and keep the interface open. Or you can do control enter to assign the material and close. And there you have it. Each of these materials are now assigned. And of course you're able to assign materials on object level also if you want to. And I'll briefly I'll talk about the scene viewer mode, which allows you to apply materials to specific polygon groups or selections. So simply select whatever SOP node you want to add this material to. I'm going to add it to my instance pot. And then I'm going to go and make a selection. And from here we just can use the uh, tab menu or we can use our shortcut. I'll use the tab menu this time. Opening assign material on top of a scene viewer will bring up the scene viewer mode. So in here what we can do is call this um, top highlight maybe. And you've got a material assigned to that selection now, which is nice. Along with just being able to see which materials are dependent on your node selection, which I'll go over in the next section, you can also just go into any individual material, right click on it and then open up the material assignment UI. And this gives you a bunch of options. You can select one or multiple materials, make changes to them, assign them to new materials, assign them to existing materials with replace. So when you do assign new material, it'll bring up basically like a lockdown version of your assigned material. And say you want to assign a bunch of new nodes to this material, you can just grab them all and drag them into this UI. As I mentioned prior, you can now see which materials are dependent just by selecting a node and it will outline each of these dependent nodes with a ring. By default, the options are just very base level and you can see, for example, if you select a material SOP, it will tell you that that's dependent. And if you select an object level node, then it'll tell you that's dependent if it's inside of the material on this level. But if you wanna go a bit deeper, you can go into the highlight preferences and enable child and attribute searches. Uh, attribute searches will go over instances as well, which is obviously very useful when you're just selecting a bunch of points but are actually instances. So for example, if I go over here and select my instance node, there's, there's no actual material attribute in here, which it will also look for, but there's just an instance attribute and it's gonna look through all of these and check if they have materials assigned to them, which they do. And as just a bit of a better visual indicator, if you're inside a material node and editing it, if you make an object or SOP level selection, it will notify you and let you know that you're inside of a material that is dependent, just simply with a tick or a cross. Just sort of throw it in there as well. Lights, 
also have rings on them when they're enabled or disabled. So that's a bit of a better visual indicator than, you know, nothing because the display isn't actually on or off. It's just if it's visible in your scene view. Cameras, it will tell you if you're inside of a camera in the uh, scene viewer. If you change them, it will update. If you're in a switcher camera, it will do the same. Like so. So this is just an out of the box implementation that I think is very useful. Really good visual indicator of what's going on in your scene.